Hello and welcome to the Categorically Romance podcast. I'm Aaron. And I'm Bree. And today we have the distinct pleasure of joining in on a writer's retreat with Amy Andrews, Pippa Roscoe, and Allie Williams. Welcome everyone to the podcast. Thanks for being here with us. Thank you for having us. It's lovely to have you crash our writing retreat. (laughs) (laughs) We've obviously been working very hard this morning already. on the beach at all that's totally not a thing we've done (laughs) (laughs) I mean we've been like planning on crashing this writer's retreat right Erin for like months now oh yeah absolutely (laughs) and that's the weird thing it's like we're on a writer's retreat in Ireland (laughs) two English people and an Australian are on a retreat in Ireland which is like but you know it's kind of like the best of all worlds really yeah well, how yeah, did the I, retreat come to be? Like, how did you guys decide Ireland and all of that? Well, because, um, so my daughter lives in Ireland and we were coming and visiting her for Christmas this year. And I contacted a few of my author buddies and I was like, hey, I'm going to be in Ireland at this like bed and because my um, daughter's partner's family owns a bed and breakfast in Dingle. And I'm oh like, my gosh. Bed and breakfast. Why don't we like, why don't we all get together for like a little writer's retreat? And sort of kind of all happened from there, really. Yeah, of course, you know, Pippa speaking, and of course I was just like, no, <laughs> why would I want to go to Ireland? Um, <laughs> I don't have to write in a gorgeous kind of B&B in Dingle um, on the coast, on the west coast of Ireland. It sounds awful. <laughs> oh, no, like how, how will we cope? Twist my arm. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> this sounds like, like, an American Hallmark movie, like a girl travels, travels to Ireland and her love interest parents just so happen to own a B&B next to the beach. It sounds perfect. Yeah, guys, we're going to the pub later. It's going to get really full on PS, I love you. And, like, the holiday. And, oh, the we, yeah, we are the full cliche at the moment. It's like, if only this, the, if only the bed breakfast was run down, it'd be perfect. But actually, it's a beautiful, beautiful place we're in. So no repairs needed. No. Yeah. Although we just need, we just need a hunky man to come and stoke the fire. Every no, no, I bubble every now and then. Right. What are the chances of snow there? <laughs> Well, it's actually quite cold here at the moment, and it's certainly not in this part of Ireland, but for a lot of the rest of Ireland, there is snow, but not n- not any possibility kind of in this area. But I know that um, Peter and Ali got to go back to England, and it's been snowing there. So <sighs> My yeah. sister actually got snowed into her house the other day, like oh, actually gosh. snowed in. So, Oh, <laughs> my gosh. Like, I can't, and here I, I pray I... snow would make this like this would be a cherry on top of the cake. Like I would be like in Christmas <laughs> orgasm heaven. It would be amazing, but not going to happen. And, so. and of course, we would be terrible. It would be terrible to be snowed in in the B and B. Oh, I know. Yeah, right. <laughs> snowed in with the romance writing. <laughs> oh gosh, a romance writing <laughs> snowbound <laughs> retreat. <laughs> I, I, I now need to write this for a like an FM snowed in writer's retreat done. There we go. Next year. <laughs> I mean, you Amy, how long of a plane ride is that for you? Sorry? How long of a plane ride is it for you? Uh, it's kind of, it's like 20, sort of three flying hours, I guess. It's sort of like 15 and then eight, sort of, you know, whichever way you've got to go. It's sort of to Singapore and then Singapore to sort of um, Dublin is, yeah, sort of the long leg in that flight. So but I've, I've been here for three weeks now, so I'm feeling very rested and relaxed and <laughs> not legged and um, been, you know, sort of, Tripping around Ireland with my daughter and my husband. My son arrived here um, a couple last night as well. And my sister and her family are going to be here for Christmas Day. Like for me, big fat Amy Andrews Christmas in Ireland kind of extravaganza <laughs> on Christmas Day. Oh my Day. god! <laughs> it sounds just <laughs> terrible. Right, Erin. <laughs> We're here in the states, okay? <laughs> it sounds so basic. I'll be in Texas. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll be here in Texas, okay? Like I'm complaining because it's it was 39 degrees this morning, but it'll be 64 this afternoon. And I'm like dreaming of like y'all have people this literally they're snowed in. Like it just sounds so it lovely. Sounds <laughs> It's very, very cold. <laughs> <laughs> Not as romantic when, like, you, you, you don't. Although traveling together to keep warm would be ever so ro- romantic, I suppose. And as well. Yes, yeah. cozy. <laughs> <laughs> we're actually, look tonight we're going to a pub for a pub quiz if that's not like you know also cute little Irish, Irish pub yeah. you kind of Christmas know, rom-com I know exactly <laughs> exactly whatever it is it's going to be mulled oh yes. wine mulled cider <laughs> okay who out of you three is most likely to know the like most random pub quiz questions not me that was Pippa <laughs> I've already told everyone um, it doesn't matter how sure I sound that I know the answer, it's never going to be the right answer. <laughs> well. Like, I'm just, I'm amazed that they're even letting me near the table at this point. <laughs> I, I, we go to a quiz night, like a pub quiz night back home every She's a every ringer. Week. <laughs> She's, she, they've been training for this every year. <laughs> So I'm, I'm, you know, kind of probably a bit more... Yeah. Okay. Okay, yes. A random kind of facts, especially if they throw in the odd Australian question. And actually, the woman who runs it at this pub is an ex, expat Australian, so... So she do, really is a ringer. <laughs> we do get a couple of Australian questions, which is, to be fair, does help. I'm really good at very, very specific piece, uh, bits of information. So, like, if they cover professional wrestling or romance. <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> That's one yeah. spot. Yeah. I'm great sorry, on. So, sorry. like, general knowledge. Can we pause this and go back to the professional wrestling? <laughs> <laughs> professional wrestling. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, WWE, ICW. Um, oh, my goodness, she's really in more off now. TNA. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I had a whole... In fact, the heroine from, like, my first novel that came out was actually based on Becky Lynch, who is, like, an Irish, like, big name wrestler in, in the WWE. Oh. There are like, little references to her wrestling moves. And sort of oh nestled my in the gosh. Top. That's right. Then. I hope that, you get a wrestling that's tonight. Amazing. <laughs> that is amazing, Erin. <laughs> the things you don't pick up on. <laughs> <laughs> so has there been actual writing going on or oh, no yeah. i wrote um 170 words that i then probably deleted <laughs> <laughs> that you then deleted <laughs> Look, i've got to tell you today has been the most beautiful weather it's cold but it's like blue sky sunshine and this area that we're on in is there's a massive huge big um ride around the dingle Peninsula drive called Slayhead, and it's beautiful and amazing and so we did take today off to do a little bit of a drive around yeah. and do that kind of thing but tomorrow yeah, today was very important we filled our creative world yes in order for writing to happen tomorrow yeah, that's so i've got to get like ten thousand words done tomorrow so yeah yeah the writing has to happen we have goals that will t- start tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> or late night after the pub when we come back and write all the fun scenes <laughs> I would love to just see the Word document that no, is written didn't. after you all leave the pub. <laughs> Having, you know, a few drinks, won a quiz game. Like, we just want that insight to what actually gets written. <laughs> <laughs> so when you, all ar- when you all arrived, did you all have, like, did you all say, okay, we're going on this writing retreat. Did you show up with writing goals? Or is it like, let me just be in this beautiful place, surrounded by friends and try, like, start something or what like tell us what's going on uh i think we all have our own like goals of mm-hmm. things we want to achieve in these three days whether that will actually happen or not <laughs> is of course another thing but we all came to yeah wanting to do certain things i've got some stuff i need to do for releases that are happening next year um i've got some revisions to do yeah i've got a i've got a book to write yeah, yeah. novella to write so yeah, yeah. So we are we are goal orientated women. <laughs> yes, with that in mind. <laughs> so on one level, we definitely, definitely know what we want yeah. to do, but also there's lots of it's really beautiful and, and lots, well, it's like, business. It's business talk. It's uh, totally no, no. It's just gossip and hanging out and drinking wine. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Again, that creative well, though. I mean, sometimes yeah, gossip and drinking wine may be exactly what you need. Well, this I mean, this is the thing. We, we spend so much time here, you know, behind our computers, in our own houses, not really seeing, talk, like talking online with people, but it's actually getting a chance to hang out and kind of, you know, face-to-face and be with each other. Um, it does 
it does actually fill a creative well, really, because you know it can be so isolate isolating yeah. being a, you know being a, a writer or anything a creative person. So it's it is nice to kind of I feel like you are automatically more creative when you're around creative people to bounce yeah. ideas off and talk about things with. Or, or vent in like a safe space. Obviously, I tell you that because I'm doing so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but it is I think it's really important we do spend so much of our time especially mm. you know not just behind our computers but in different countries yeah mm. and um this is our network this is our water cooler conversation which mm. I think is actually really yeah. important in deprogramming some of the kind of more difficult things of of what we do mm. and then of course you've got it's the perfect opportunity to try out all those plot bunnies that you have like oh i've got this idea for this or i've got this mm. idea for this and well is it really crazy to have this idea yes <laughs> yeah. but then you end up going up these beautiful places and th- i mean this is one of the most inspiring places it you've got like rolling hills the mountains the sea all within like a five minute radius of each other oh it's wild God. It, it is very very kind of inspiring space like and we've all kind of gone yeah we're totally setting more books here can we so we can expense work tricks back here <laughs> do them together more retreat yeah, uh, it, yeah it's <laughs> incredible and really beneficial to actually spend time together mm. i can definitely tell you aaron and Bree, that they look forward to many more Amy Andrews books set in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> you we'll be one that. clicking away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how did you all become friends? Because I feel like romance is so huge. There's all these amazing authors. How do you meet and like find your flock of people? Like, how did this friendship even happen? I mean, I started as a blogger. Um, okay. Way back when, in like 2014, which is how I met Amy. Mm. Um, when Kiss, when yeah, Kiss and Modern Tempted were running. So I did a lot of stuff with that, and then shifted into writing a little bit, and that's where how I started doing. I used to do like afternoon teas. So I think the last time you came to London, Amy, mm. I organised an afternoon tea. Pippa came to one of my ones, and it would just be a bunch of random authors from all over the place um, coming together and. I think it's opening those spaces. Yeah, Ali, Ali's very good at opening those spaces for authors to come to mm. and and to have those conversations um, and to make space for that, which is really lovely. Um, I mean, I met Amy for the first time when I was still working for Harlequin, and um, you know, and then just limpeted onto <laughs> her, like stuck myself to her side. <laughs> <laughs> Be um, my friend. Yeah, and then, like, attached to me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I guess it's the thing. It's like it's it's writing conferences and writing, yeah. you know. And that's why they're so important. That's yeah. why writing conferences are so important because they are a place to meet writers from around the world and mm-hmm. to have business conversations, but also, like, personal conversations about how we do our business mm-hmm. um, and, you know, to share it. Like, our loved ones are very understanding of what we do, but you can't say, oh, my God, how do I fix this black moment? And they're like, what's a black moment? Like, oh. <laughs> um, what's happening? <laughs> so there's a shared understanding mm-hmm. and that, like, and the friendships just come from that and because these two women are amazing. So, Aww. Aww. Okay, we need to stop now. When I start getting soppy, it's always a morning. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Pippa's amazing too. Yeah. <laughs> I think one of the things that actually, is one of the things that is good to come out of COVID because many, many horrendous things came up happened obviously um but people became more used to using zoom Mm. and using video so whereas before a lot of like the conversations would happen either twitter or social media now Mm. it's it's become so normalized like go hey you feel for a zoom call and Mm. jumping on zoom with people all over the world i write with a load of americans and you know they will be up at like two o'clock in the two o'clock in the morning my time and i'll jump on because i can't sleep and they're like hey come right with us having that kind of community and be able to have that kind and you know, stuff like this, being able to run a podcast from opposite sides of the world. Like, it's incredible. And community that's accessible yes. at different times. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. you know, especially, I think, you know, Ali will be the first to say she has a job. She writes mm. at different times during the day. You know, we've all got to negotiate kind of our lives and being able to find that, oh, someone's online at the time that I yeah. need it. How great. And that's just fantastic. Mm. So... One thing that I've been wanting to kind of slide in there and ask you all, (laughs) knowing that we were going to talk to you, is I feel like every time I pop on to the Twitter, I see these conversations about romance 
and how it's changing. I think as a reader and podcaster and, you know, looking online, like obviously like it's growing. There's so many new readers and all of that, which is fantastic. As writers and uh, Allie being a writer and an editor, do you all feel that it is changing? I think there might be a perception thing with it. I mean, especially if you look at TikTok and how readers are um, approaching romance, it's very different. A lot of younger Mm. readers are less interested in saying, I read romance and more interested in tropes or character types or story storylines or heat levels. And so they'll read across genre. So I'm, I'm not sure necessarily that romance itself is changing, but the way that we view it and interact with it um definitely that there, there are shifting perceptions and conversations around that and that brings in more diversity which for me it can only be a good thing because yeah. I also mm-hmm. write a bit of romance so <laughs> Mm. Absolutely. And it's one of the things that's been really great to see is just the variety of romance coming up. And, you know, whether that is Indie Pub, Kindle Unlimited, different formats, um, just the joy of seeing how many different stories there are out there and finding pockets of communities that are like suddenly into one particular mm. nude come kind of like trope or even just interacting and interrogating how they feel about that trope. Um, I think, you know, Ali's right in that it is what we are seeing in terms of interaction and recognition and yeah. readership. Because a lot of these, a, a lot of communities, especially communities that weren't, that have not always been embraced wholly by traditional publishing, have made their own spaces. And that is now becoming a lot more accessible for other people to find. And Twitter and, was a very yeah. important place for those communities. Yes. I mean, we can we can oh, goodness, goodness, no, potentially going, but... avoid, avoid the political <laughs> conversation about Twitter, perhaps. But um, one of the reasons I'm still on it is because I know that there are communities on Twitter yeah. that I um, have access to that I cannot find elsewhere, and that will be why I stay on Twitter until the end. Because, because <laughs> so I until think, next week. Well, uh, right, yeah. we thought it was ending, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but because because I find that the conversations that those communities and those spaces are having are really important. For, for me to be aware of and but I think there is like we were talking earlier today well Amy about like chiclet and and rom-coms and how there seems to be like a lot of that seems to be coming back which and being more popular mm. I wonder like so is it changing or is the publishing industry is always grappling with why romance is perennially popular. Yeah. yeah. And so they try to like the article come, that came back like, again recently. Like the article from The Guardian that was tweeted, I think, a couple a few days ago, Carly Scott, I think, was talking about it on Twitter and you know, how, you know, now it's it's all about, you know, singledom and books ending with singledom and, and not falling in love and stuff. And, you know, the point that Carly was, Scott was making was, well, that's, you know, not romance. So I think there's a lot of people around and about in the industry that try to, you know, say, why is this, you know, why is this particular genre so popular? And sometimes I try to justify it or explain it. <laughs> give you a new or, reading of why romance exactly. is popular this year. And I think it's easy then to, give, to sort of think, well, that's why it's changing, but I don't. I really don't think, I think there's lots of commentary about it's changing and why, but I don't know that it actually really is. The people who who read it and have always read it and who write it, um, I don't think so. I think new readers coming in in different ways is great. Certainly TikTok's been great for that. It's nice now to go into a bookshop in Australia, for example, and actually see a romance section. So often in bookshops there, you don't even get a romance section. But now we've yeah. got these sections that are massive and they're all <coughs> romance. And that really is, you know, thanks to this, this kind of newer sort of way of uh, the younger audience that are coming in, you know, via TikTok and stuff. So I guess that's that's changed in how, we, how romance is finding readers. But I don't know if romance has changed necessarily. I don't know. Maybe it has. But. I think the core premise of of what romance is is still there. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I don't think – I think that that is what makes romance – yeah, so relevant because it just transcends time mm. in that way, like not not in a kind of deep mythological, way, <laughs> but just it, it it is what it is, and at the heart of it, the the promise is so pure that it doesn't mm. matter where you put that, the promise is never going to change. Mm. No, and from an academic perspective, because obviously my PhD is you know, it's like in the academic community, like the standard is romance genre romance has a happy ever after. If it doesn't have a happy ever after ever after then it, it can be romantic it can be a love mm, story but it's, it's not, not a it's not a genre romance and that that is very clear and it's always interesting because the same discussions happen every now and then and 
it sometimes amuses me a little bit because romance authors get very angry, authors and readers sometimes get very angry and no romance has to have, and I agree with them. But also, if it means that readers are picking up other things, does it? There's a very different take on the approach to the genre, which I think is interesting. I don't know if that's a bit waffly, but like, yeah, like I know what you mean. Like <laughs> every now and then, you see the kind of. I think I think it's what we're seeing is we what mean, I've seen recently yeah. is an interrogation <laughs> of what the happy ever after looks like yes. for you, mm. and I think that is a worthy conversation. Mm. But I think what people forget within that conversation when they're trying to read, when they're trying to find or define what the happy ever after is for you, you forget that the unifying of whatever it looks like to you is still a happy ever. Mm. It's still there is still like the, the happy ever or after the happily or now. the happily yeah. for now. It's still that's still the guarantee. Mm. It's the ha- it's the happiness. And I think and what that. there was a really interesting discussion around. Um, oh, I think it's called Back in the Day by Katrina Jackson, where the the premise of it is that yeah, it's him remembering their courtship and their happy ever after. It's still a romance because the whole premise of the whole book is that mm. and the this is this is their, their yeah. It's all. The whole thing is about that. It's remembering that. It's sad, but it is. It they had their happy ever after. Mm. Um, and I think there are ways in which we can think about that and interrogate it that are slightly different. And I think readers that who come from outside traditional, like traditionally, I'm a I'm a genre romance reader. Readers who come from outside are less married to some of those structures that we as romance readers who mm. read it a lot yeah. expect or yeah. beats that we, we're used to seeing. Yeah. We're seeing a lot more romances now that don't have the rap moment anymore, yeah. don't have the moment to know um, the Duke who didn't by Courtney Milan. Like she has a discussion in her like author at the end what, about why she chose not to have that big breakup moment, to have the tension build and then to let it release without the big breakup. Mm. And I think there are some really interesting things around structure and what we expect. Um, that that would be really fun to see where, where it goes. Yeah. What do you think, Brie and Aaron? Do you think it's changed? You've been reading it for a while. What do you guys think? <laughs> well, I think, uh, like Ali was saying, I think the structure is changing a bit. I, I think, um, like she was saying about the the black moment, uh, there's yeah. there's been several books I've read recently that don't have one, and which is which is fine with me. Um, As a you know, reader, that, how did you find that? Did you did you find that? you missed it or you thought it was odd or was it only at the end where you're like oh hold on a minute we didn't have that moment that I'm so familiar with I, I don't know it's hard to say because I I really do enjoy some black moments of uh you know just that that yeah, drama true, of oh my true. gosh it's oh it, it just it was going so well and now it's, just, it's it's fallen to pieces but at the same time there's that realist in me of like well if that caused them to fall to pieces these two don't don't actually belong together yeah. like they if they weren't mature enough to get past Past that you know <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. without but, storming off and going to another country <laughs> right right <laughs> but you know there's there's still um you know that i actually i just read a presents recently that i felt like there wasn't enough black moment in it so yeah. you know it's 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 just gotta it depends on the story for me and if the characters yeah. really need that or not or if the story itself mm-hmm. needs it if it's I think done it's a low angst romances these days yeah. as well so I think mm-hmm. perhaps that's why we're missing you know that sort of black moments in some mm. of the books because and I, I personally can get on board with that because I quite like to write low-wake stuff myself yeah. so yeah. Um, I yeah. don't I don't always write them in but then again I put through my character I put my characters through so much but by the time oh, they, they get yes. to the end I'm like, yes. I, I feel like this would be me at this yeah. stage this is I'm invested nice. in this you is too let's, let's give you some nice <laughs> Well, I thought about like when we read for the podcast, I think last year, um, I think it was the Tiffany Rice Christmas Blaze. I think it was that one. And there, by the time I finished it, I was like, I don't remember there really being a dark moment, but it was so intense the whole time like there was kind of just conflict all throughout the story Mm. that I was like oh I don't need this because it was kind of there the whole time but like kind of subtly at the same time so I don't I don't mind if there's not one personally Mm. um but yeah again it just kind of goes back to the story or whatever so it's yeah I think as long as you've got strong character arcs and you can see growth of them 
individually and separately, then it's not always necessary. But I also understand why there are certain, especially in like series or category romance, I see why there are authors who are, and, and readers who are like, no, no, in this line, I need, like, I would be very surprised to find a presents without a black moment. Like it would, it would feel a bit odd from what I've come to expect. Doesn't mean I wouldn't yeah. enjoy it. Mm. Um, but whereas mm-hmm. something like special edition or um, maybe love inspired, like I'd, I'd be less like, or I'd be less sad if there were if there wasn't a black moment. Like I feel like the way that those build, you could do that quite build that tension and release it in mm. a way that is still satisfying for the reader. Whereas in in presents because everything is so over the top, it's so elevated and like everything is so angsty. It would be a bit weird not to have that. You kind of need it to release the tension, uh, if that makes sense, from mm. kind of like a structural thing. Mm. My, you can't see, but my arms are waving around to they the are. point where Kippa <laughs> is in danger right now. I'm <laughs> <laughs> leaving out of the way. We're all good. <laughs> sorry, Ben. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, with this, I mean, I guess I when we going back to the, the original discussion, like how I was thinking, well, how does these the way that romance is is evolving and the structures and all of that like when you think of category right like each line has that reader's promise and like readers come to each line for those like that they expect something like presents we're expecting the fairy tale medical we're expecting that small town feel because it's like you know set in a hospital but they're exotic places and all of that like you know what you're going to it for Mm -hmm. um how does category and it, like you have, I feel like every line you have that dedicated readership, right? But like, you know, we've talked to some authors from different lines that are like, our readership is honestly getting old, <laughs> you know? So it's like, yeah. how how do the lines, how does category evolve and change? Because um, like we, we did, we, Aaron and I recently read a Presents and we enjoyed it. It was, it was good. But I told him, I was like, this honestly felt like it could have been a romance. Like the lines were really blurred. And we had recently read a romance well, as well we that we were like. As long as it wasn't one of mine. Can we just clarify <laughs> that? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> we had re- we had recently read a no, romance right, that I was, I, I'd re- we'd read this romance and I was like, man, I don't know this. It didn't feel very romancy. And so we're talking about it. And he's like, yeah, it honestly probably could have been a special edition. And it's like, it just felt like those two books that we'd read back to back, we enjoyed, but they didn't feel like what we would have went to that line for. So how is that's interesting? How does category grow and evolve along with romance? I mean, I think you can't escape the fact that as writers, we are growing and evolving within the kind of the context of the world. Our, our, what we're reading, what we're seeing, what we're kind of what we're creating is based kind of on that. Um, sorry, I'm trying to find my way through this sentence and I'm aware that I'm not, I'm not making any sense. So I'm basically trying to say that, I, you know, I'm going to have to come back to this, actually. I'm going to pause that. Someone else will kick in. And then when I've actually formulated that in a full sentence that makes even remote sense, <laughs> I will come back to that. I think, um, so I haven't written for a category line. Um, obviously, both Amy and Pippa have. Uh I started out reviewing them. I have read oh, hundreds in my time. Yes. Um, lots and lots. I have so many at home. And we oh still need goodness. you to come talk about Kiss. Just saying. Oh, it's going <laughs> to happen. Like, I have a book cart, which is just Kiss books. Oh, um, I've seen it. I've seen pictures. It's quite <laughs> yeah. amazing. Uh, like, the first books of Amy's I ever read, like, on there. Um, Yay! It, and actually, for me, like, it's been really in- an interesting journey as a reader because the lines that I loved more than anything Kiss and Secret Romance both closed um, and I've been really interested in Desire and I know that uh, they have been talking quite a lot about some of the new uh, lines uh, some of the authors that they have signed uh, people like Carmen Lee and uh, Mika James whose books are you know their sort of black queer romances the promise that there is going to be more diversity but also more queerness in standard category romance is it's going to change a lot of things it will have an impact I imagine on distribution um because there are some places uh it it will impact distribution it will impact um who wants to read it 
and who agrees to read it. Um, but I think it's important. Like Definitely, Karina's done yeah. a great job. And Karina Adores is phenomenal, but those aren't books. Those are, <laughs> that's a digital first print. It's not a paperback mm. print. Mm. So seeing queerness in those lines, and that is going to change, it's going to change where people write. And I think linking it back to your original question about like what, the soul of a of a series line is i think they're all evolving at the moment well that i mean that's what i was gonna when i finally got my friends together <laughs> when I, when I, when I, <laughs> welcome back Pippa. welcome back for a minute and gather them Pippa inside back. the sentence of an order um is that you know category series will always find ways to be relevant and contemporary because the authors are also relevant you know we are writing for our, the series is a promise, but we're writing stories within that promise. Mm-hmm. The promise, it goes back to the kind of what I was saying about the romance. The promise is universal. What you do within the story for that series is what makes it unique and relevant and what changes the, like, what makes it different and evolving. So you can evolve within the existing promise in a way that makes category unique, more unique than the, the other kind of potential offerings from, from romance, if that makes sense. So there's a familiarity there with the promise that's been made for the series, but there's also the kind of fun ways in which those series promises are being explored by the re- the authors. Mm. That, sorry, there you go. That was it. That was my soundbite. I got there in the end. It's a muddy shot. There you go. <laughs> Please tell me you actually got that. I'm just stumbling through it. <laughs> yeah. How do you guys feel about it? as readers because there is an inherent promise when you pick up a, a book from a series line How, do you feel do you feel excited about the ways in some in which some of these are being explored or do you feel frustrated by it like from a curiosity perspective um I'll go first Erin but I definitely want to hear what you have to say <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm really excited and I'm really excited for this new line that's coming mm. in the hopes that it will um, encourage or excite people to read the lines that are also already in existence. Um, and I'm ex- I'm really anxious to see if I don't know, you know, like how what we're getting like we we like I said, we read a, a two books recently together and um, the romance in particular, I felt like um man, if she would have had like 60 more pages to like lean into this a little bit more, I would have absolutely loved that, you know? But I mean, it's, again, it just is like, well, this is how it's been and it's always been. So I don't know how we would have made certain things work. Um, But yeah, I'm just really, I'm, I'm excited, excited to see, you know, this what's coming and if what we are currently getting just the continuous growth and involvement I guess is is just sweet to say I mean because in the romance there was a bisexual character I'm like I don't think I've read a bisexual character in a true love up to this mm. point maybe I've skipped it maybe I've missed it but it was so exciting to see um which, so yeah. sorry which book is that because I need to read that speak <laughs> I'm curious myself I'm like yes Oh to? gosh, um, it was the newest Tana Shake that came out. There, the, Forbidden the, the Kisses hero. with her millionaire boss. Yeah, the hero was actually bisexual. His ex was was a male, and I was like, "What? I, let me read this again." Like, what? Okay, yeah. it, it was That's nice awesome. to see. So, yeah, Aaron, what do you take it? Because I feel like I'm rambling. <laughs> Um, I'm definitely excited to see where Desire goes. Um, we haven't gotten like full details on the the changes that they're allowing within that line, but from what it sounds like, the settings aren't going to have to be so much high society North America, which I think there's there's a bit of, at least from my perspective, there's a bit of trouble with that kind of character just with inequality these days in the real world and i know that exists and presents but presents is so fantasy like you can there's a lot more escapism involved in that um but you know looking at these these just very affluent americans and and things that can be can sometimes put a bad taste in your mouth and you can't quite yeah get the cognitive dissonance um for it so the uh allowance that they're going to do some more down-to-earth characters set Things, things like that, but still have that feel of desire. I'm super excited about that. Yeah. yeah. I think it's going to be yeah. a really, really great line and we're just really yeah. excited to see what's going to happen with it. Oh, I, I know a couple of, I, I'm friends with a couple of the authors who have had books picked up and I am so freaking excited for these books <laughs> to come out because they are, yeah, they're really like good emotional intensity, um, 
characters who are, like you say, more down to earth, more accessible, um, and just really, really cool storylines. Like, oh, I can't say anything because I can't say anything, but I am so excited for these books. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, Interestingly, just, uh, you were just talking, I was thinking about the medical line, thinking I don't think really they're changing particularly at all, except that obviously there's more diversity now, which is great because we're, there's more diverse authors as well, which is amazing. But I actually recently sort of asked if I would like to write a really kind of medical light in, in the medical line, like a more like a rom com kind of medical with like quite light medical detail which kind of set me back on my heels a little bit. I was quite sort of surprised that that would even be kind of considered as something that I could do. So um, please do it. Think- please do it. Please. <laughs> yes, it sounds amazing. <laughs> I, I, I always think that, um, you know, Harlequin's category lines and the editors and, you know, the team are always open to anything that might um, to try something that might work, that might, you know, and to be fair, it might not work either, but you never know to try, do you? So you know, that they're open to that, you know, is is a good thing. Yeah, yeah. and there are some really cool books. I mean, I, I remember one where the entire timeline existed over, what was it, 24 hours? <laughs> I'm looking at Pippa because she did the book, which is oh, really cool. I've done one of those as well. Yeah. I've done a medical like that. Was a, each, each chapter was an <laughs> hour in the day. Yeah. Yeah. And there was that His Until Midnight, which I think we know. Yeah, His <laughs> Until Nikki. Yeah, his until his midnight time. by Nikki Logan like takes place over like four years and it's the same night four years and four yeah. years apart, which is just excellent. There's some really it's, cool stuff happening in category. But beyond that, like this is one of my favourite books of all time, honestly, the Nikki Logan book. Oh, it's like, so good. Um, so good. The Hero and the Hero and Me <coughs> on New Year's Eve. And then I love New Year. Also New Year's Eve that they meet. The chapters then become part of this gastronomic food tasting menu at this <laughs> restaurant. Of course, I'm all over this. This is food. This is romance. Like you can't get better than that. Um, so, and then the chapters are like headed by like the particular like dish. It's just brilliant. Like it, it, that is a really good book. Oh, it's just delicious. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, I think what is really good is to see how much they're encouraging <laughs> the you know the play with formats. Yeah, like mm. I love a format play. I think everyone knows that. Yeah. Um, and and that's been really really delightful. And I think that goes back to what I was saying about this is how category series remains contemporary yeah. is that the core promise is still there but like how we present that mm. and how we explore that promise yeah. is changed it you know can be changed looked at and played yeah. with and like both Rachel Stewart and Amanda Chenelli were supposed to be with us this week this week and they haven't been able to make it but like Amanda's books um where mm. in presents where she's writing neurodiverse characters and oh my god her latest book the cover she's got yes. this stunning plus the red dress oh, oh right just the red dress oh. you just have to say the red the dress whole thing. the red but dress she's writing neurodiverse characters who are canonically on page neurodiverse which i i always wanted to see growing up and i never did so, you know, we're seeing really exciting books. And I think Rachel's latest is like one that's set over a year. Yeah. Uh, what's it called? Um, My Year with the Billionaire. And yeah. again, that idea that it's not just a couple of weeks, like this extended timeline. I, yeah. So excited about these. Oh, yeah. Summer and Edward were adorable in that book. <laughs> <laughs> so okay let's talk the, the this 2022 is coming to a close so like what has been like getting you all through this year like okay pippa you mentioned <laughs> like <laughs> romance foodie <laughs> romances like when you get on your kindle are you looking for something specific this year was it monster romances like what reading specifics I, were I getting you through like, 2022 it, this is where i really wish amanda could be here because she would be talking all about the monster <laughs> romances. Like, we just need to do a whole one with her about monster romances. So we'll just, we won't step on her toes with that because that. I mean, I also edited like tons of them last year. So I'm a little bit monster romanced out at the moment. But <laughs> so what are you looking for? If you had a romance in your stocking this Christmas, Ali, what would it be? Yeah, what would it be? Uh, queer, neurodiverse, fat, paranormal. Done. Yes. <laughs> like, I was like, that was that was a very solid, that, strong. Or answer. I want to see more poly romances, which isn't it isn't in category, but um, and not just yeah. thru- not just closed, yeah. not yet, not just closed throuples. Um, there's a series by Chris Ripper 
who is writing, for, has been writing for Corena. Um, the first one's called Catalyst, and it is about polycules. So um, basically found queer found families where more than one person is sleeping with the other people, and they all have their individual relationships and friendships and connections. And it's, I want to see more of that. I want to see, there is quite a bit out there, but not enough. I want more of it. I, I love the, the way that found family really works in queer romance. And I, yeah, that's all I want in my romance is the moment. Found family and those connection, those deep connections between friends as well as between romantic partners. So Amy, what would your Christmas stocking romance be? <laughs> <laughs> well, and I've just, so I guess this year, the last few years I've tried to be like actively read more diverse everything like um BIPOC and fat rep and um neurodiversity so I've had very interesting kind of um reading list which has been which has been great and I kind of set myself a good read school every year 50 books I'm just about to make it this year which Ooh. is very exciting. yay yay congratulations I've, I've just it's funny going back to just I'm scrolling through my Kindle now. I've come across uh, the lady and the orc talking about monsters. Oh, oh my god! And the oh reason- yeah, oh that's a great one. Yeah, yeah great series. Was, 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 was because Pippa oh, it was and, and, and Pippa Amanda and the man and Trina and I were talking about this book and so, talking yes. about <laughs> how much um, she's trying to be polite. seed. Yeah, is involved. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh yeah, but lots of fluids. <laughs> Yeah. Are we bouncing? Can I can I just check our, our like our, our age rating on this? <laughs> You're fine. I want to talk about the use of language. I think we're listed as explicit. <laughs> this is listed as explicit. She's talking okay. about orc sperm, of which there is an obscene amount. There is so much. There's rivers and fountains of it. Gush- and I was just- gushing. There's gushing. So funny. Oh, oh. Which is not a phrase I ever want to say again. <laughs> Um, is, that's great. I have no problem with that. I was just not prepared. Shocked. I was not prepared. We had tried to prepare her. Oh, I, I was not. prepared because Amanda was like, "Tell me when you meet the fountain." I'm like, "What the fuck do you yeah, mean? What, what, what that, goodness yeah. do you mean the fountain?" She was like, "The fountain." Okay. Oh gosh. <laughs> Um, but, I, but, I guess, sorry, what I would like to see in my Christmas stocking is like, I'm a rom com gal, I'm a rom com yeah. reader, so kind of anything rom com will usually, yeah. you know, be a winner yeah. for me on Christmas morning. What about you, Pippa? Well, I'm I'm very clear. Uh, for Christmas, in my stocking, I would like a book by Ali Wood. I would like a book by oh, Amy Andrews. I would like a book that's by not fair. Sarah, <laughs> He did that Noted. She went totally last did that. to show us up. I did, and I even set up the question too. She no, did um, too. <laughs> she did. <laughs> um, I, I. It's funny. So when I'm when I'm writing, I tend not to read category because I need something different. So I need to focus on something else. And um, recently, I was sort of I've I've been reading the um, the Bromance Book Club. The is it Lisa or Lisa Lisa K Adams? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and I've really like I think I've read three or four of the books now. And the recent one was like a very merry bromance. It's the most <laughs> romantic time of the year. Um, <laughs> and I have really enjoyed watching this kind of group of male friend characters and seeing romance through their perspective yeah i don't know how much you know about it um but basically the the central characters are the uh, um a group of men who have a romance book club and they explore positive like their relationships with their with their heroines um through like the the romance the romance book of the kind of from the book club so sometimes you'll even get excerpts from the romance books that they're all reading um but what i'm enjoying is is the friendship between the men and how supportive it is and uh, um actually i you know i don't i don't mean to avoid using the word toxic masculinity or the positive masculinity but i found like they are talking about expressing their feelings how you should behave in a relationship what is healthy what is healthy as a man as a as a partner and what is healthy as a friend as a male friend to another male friend and um but also they're just really fun and they're funny and i love the dynamics and i love the characters so yeah that's been really enjoyable and that really is found family yeah like that's really that's that's a very strong key theme in that in that in, in all of those books yeah and i kind of want to actually do a quick shout out if we're doing found family um there's a, a explicit warnings very much so for this book um zan west uh he was uh 
who died two years ago, uh, had, has a fantastic Hanukkah book called Eight Kinky Nights, which is all about found family uh, and is just phenomenal. And I think Stacey Agden also has a Hanukkah book that's free yeah. at the moment as well. She does, yeah. Um, so shout out for our Hanukkah, Kwanzaa holiday books as well as Christmas. Yeah, I think, um, yeah. 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 Really good. Well, what can y'all share anything about what you're working on? I mean, (laughs) I'm sure you're working on multiple things or whatever, but you know, tell us one thing y'all are working on. Well, I literally have just had a book come out. Well, short story come out today called Congratulations. Congratulations. Called Kink for Halls. And it is a sleeping with my ex's mum, lesbian Christmas kinky romance. Oh, God, Um, I need it. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, it is me, Allie. <laughs> and, uh, and it's. Click to buy links, will be available. Uh, it is explicit um, in the best kind of way, I think. Uh, but it's also quite soft. It's about um, like reconnecting with people and finding people you feel comfortable with and comfortable to tie up. Uh, exactly. <laughs> comfortable to tie up. Oh, yes. It, yeah. But <laughs> there's lots of enthusiastic. It, you. Is it okay to mention in passing what the main things are? You can mention whatever you want. Oh, yeah. Okay. Whatever you yeah, want. Yeah, there's a lot of enthusiastic rope play, overstimulation, and face sitting. Um, <laughs> okay. exactly. One click, one click, one click, one click. We're going to walk sperm and we can do face sitting. We're all good. <laughs> yeah, so that's been really fun. And um, I'm sort of prepping for next year. I've got some paranormals coming out next year. Um, yeah, so I'm quite excited about that. Right, you, Pippa. Um, so my, I think, I've, I've got one out at the end. I think it comes out at the end of December in America. I think it's actually already out in the UK. Um, and this is my, um, the wife of Spaniard never forgot. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah. which is, I don't know where you guys are at um, with it, but it's my fake amnesia. Your fake amnesia. Amnesia book. It's brilliant. Oh, <laughs> God, I'm so glad. Like, I, was, I love this book so much. Um, and I was very worried about it because it, it does, not because of the hairless cat, but I feel like <laughs> the hairless cat did actually, sorry, the Sphinx cat did actually steal the show. And I was like, I'm not sure how I feel about him, uh, the, the cat upstaging my hero. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that, so that, that was really, really, that was really enjoyable to write. And I've really, um, I'm, I'm glad that it's out into the world for people to read. Mm. Me too, me too. We all love a good Pippa Roscoe. Uh-huh. Well, we do. We do. <laughs> um, so, as we know, last time we spoke, um, guys, I was you talked about my burnout that I went through last year. So, actually, things I'm working on now aren't really contracted. I'm kind of working on things I just had in my head for a long time. So, I'm kind of working on a book that's called Sea Shift. She sells seashells, um, <laughs> and it's kind of um, uh, a book about sort of people who escape away to an island and kind of um, in like off like Maine, you know, up, up north, um, east of America there, and um, just to you know the the guy's a cop. But he's had to, he's sort of had to drop out and try something else. And she's a teacher and she's sort of dropped out and tried something else as well. Um, it's not really, it's a little bit of a mishmash in my brain, but it's it's kind of with my obsession with collecting sea glass. So I'm just kind of working on that. But I've got a book that's coming out in January, Breaking mm-hmm. All the Rules, which is a fourth it's- book. It's so good. It's so good. So good. <laughs> we got stuff we just, um, I, I feel like they got reasons. I feel like I want to find the message that I sent Amy <laughs> at about like three o'clock in the morning, which was <laughs> Um, I'm sobbing my eyes out. I hate you. I love you. Why did you do that to him? And now I want a Chinese takeaway. <laughs> I just remember, Amy, you telling us about it last time you were on the podcast, and we were dying laughing the way that you like were like explaining the whole setup of the book. Yeah, yeah, the the heroine is again is a bit of a dropper out of her. She kind of gives up her her tells her boss to, you know, go Stick get it. yeah, to hit the road jack and throws a dart on a board and ends up in the middle of America, um, and changes her life completely. So and break yeah, and meets her a cop and she decides to break a bunch of rules she never would have broken before and he helps her do it. So that's kind of the basic premise. And it's coming out finally after quite a long extended period of time of not being out. <laughs> 
in January 23rd. That's, and it's getting some early reviews now, which are fabulous. And, and it's that's great. also a one-click, just one-click. <laughs> if you do yourself a favour, don't mess around, just do it. <laughs> so, yeah, Roscoe um, recommends. <laughs> Roscoe recommends. Roscoe recommends. We it. need it. We need it on the <laughs> yeah. blog. We need it. <laughs> Or we just need an, like, an occasional segment of the podcast where, like, yes. Pippa, you just, like, do a voice recording. Pippa, like, <laughs> Roscoe recommends, and she just rattles <laughs> off five titles. I want a theme tune. I mean, I'm going to only do it if I have a theme tune. You need a logo, too. Roscoe recommends a logo. Yeah. We'll, we'll work on that for you guys. <laughs> Well, Please are do. there any other like titles from uh, like authors in the lines, Allie, anything you've been editing, like anything that's coming out that you're like, guys, keep this on your radar because it's fantastic and you oh, should read it. Oh, I've got, I, I have just finished, I think I can say, I'm just finishing editing uh, a Jackie Lau book for Kobo and holy crap, guys, you are not ready for like... Mm-hmm. The amazingness, the, the tropiness, the Valentine'sness, the oh, it's just classic Jackie. It's so good, like super, super tropey, super great. I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm really, really into. I really love uh, Ray Sean's books at the moment. Who's a an African American author who writes a mix of uh, sports romances and um, sort of sm- sm- a close knit community in big city stuff like she's amazing um i'm really really into her books i i have edited some of them so that's not entirely oh yeah and there's an oh oh i have christmas recommendations yes. sorry i'm like am i allowed to say of course i can say yes. uh, there's all she wants for christmas which is an mfm romance by uh jordan monroe which is um a woman and her husband go up to this cottage like this cabin for christmas and it turns out that the cabin is owned by her ex-boyfriend from college and they all get snowed in together and snowed in filking happens. <laughs> Phil and it's phenomenal. And then Torrance Sane has a, a book called Santa Santa's Baby, which <laughs> is which is absolute filth. I cannot express enough how filthy that is. And you should go read it because it's really good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm always good to hit up for the like the really dirty recommendations. Like I've got those covered. Um, yeah. So th- those are the those are yeah I, those are my extra recommendations. I, th- I think it should be Ali recommendations <laughs> rather than Roscoe. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm, I'm so you're also good at remembering yeah. authors' names and stuff and books' names. I'm terrible. I can I can tell you I've got two more books coming out next year if that's if that's allowed. I've got um, <laughs> play absolutely just the A. Book, I think in the Sydney yeah. Smoke Rugby series, it's coming out maybe. Well, not quite sure. Probably February, and I've got another medical coming out in um, August as well. And it's it's part of a four book um, continuity with um, Emily Forbes, Louisa George, and J C Haraway. That is an amazing um, lineup. Can I and just say <laughs> that is spoiled for all the <laughs> And it's like set in a fictitious hospital in Sydney. And we all have, you know, our own different characters that all intertwine. It's um, really diverse. So, um, and my book is called, I can't remember. (laughs) Um, um, Yes, I cannot remember. They've all got women's, they've all got the heroine's name in the title. And I, oh, I I think it might be like a doctor for, oh, honestly, no, they're all doctors. I can't (coughs) can't remember. Anyway, um, look for those uh, in coming out in like July, August, September and October as well. And I think I am very excited. I've got a really, really, really fun duet with Michelle Smart coming out next year as well. Oh, fun. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's good. <laughs> we need more that. presents, continuities and things. We yeah. need that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That so I, I, I miss the presents, continuities. They were like, yeah, it's, they were fantastic, partly because I was involved in them. <laughs> <laughs> Well, ladies, share with everyone where they can keep up with you on the interwebs. I have a website, AliWilliams.org, but I'm on TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, <laughs> um, usually under CL Aficionado. Or if you just set, if you just go to my website, you can find the links to everywhere else from there. But yeah, I'm usually pointing social media and doing that as opposed to writing, uh, <laughs> which I think is what we often use social media for. No, let's procrastinate against this, this particular <laughs> difficult problem. Yes. It's a distraction. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, I am usually at 
at Amy Andrews Books on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and TikTok. God help me on TikTok. <laughs> um, I had all these plans to do all these TikToks while I was in Ireland and I've literally, I think I've done one or three weeks ago and haven't done one since. So we're gathering lots of <laughs> photographs and stuff to do when I get back, but I've just kind of given TikTok a break while I'm here. But I'm... There is a very lovely video on my TikTok of like Amy and Pippa walking down the bre- yeah. beach today. Like, oh my gosh. Very, very <laughs> sort of like cozy and ro- romance authory. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yes, you can find me on pipparosco.com, Twitter, or Instagram. And don't forget, Roscoe recommends coming, yeah, coming soon. soon. Roscoe coming soon. recommends yeah. coming no, we'll, soon. We'll work your other t- you, you, the other two of you in there somehow too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you for letting us crash your writing retreat. This has been just the best. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for having us. Thanks for having us. It's been great. Really good. And listeners, Allie will be back to talk about Kiss, okay? I will. (laughs) I will. We will talk, Brie. We'll have to talk. I'm going to have to crack the whip. I want to hear what she has to say about Kiss as well. I (laughs) know. I have some get... map I made and I pinned all the locations of all the books from all over the world. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. gosh. <laughs> yeah, I'll just send them a picture yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah somewhere. Yeah. I mean, we just need a photo of the book cart so we can post it on our Instagram. <laughs> <laughs>